Hi, today we've got a hot air station to take a look at. This is the Sugon 8650 and this is one of the most powerful systems that we've looked at so far. It's similar in specifications to the Quick 861X in that it's got a 1300 watt heater and a very powerful blower up to 200 litres per minute. But as you can see, this one's got quite a different user interface that I think makes this uh, really quite a nice device to use. So let's have a quick look through the specifications and at the pricing, and then we'll quickly talk about our sponsor for this video, PCBWay. And so here it is on AliExpress at the KZ Tool store, and as you can see, it's certainly not the cheapest hot air station out there, coming in at £244, but you also have to pay for shipping on top of that. Now this does come shipped by DHL, so it actually arrived in about three days after ordering the unit, so very quick shipping, but the unit is actually really heavyweight. There must be some large transformer in it or something uh, because it is quite heavy compared to most of the other hot air stations. So I think this price just literally reflects DHL's costs for sh shipping something this heavy from China. And a quick mention about our sponsor for this video, PCBUA, who without being a sponsor for this channel, we wouldn't be able to do these kinds of videos. So a quick reminder, PCBUA offer a wide range of services from PCB manufacturer that you're probably all aware of. Uh, they've also got some offers going on at the moment for PCB assembly service, which starts at only $30. But they also do CNC machining and 3D printing so that you can get your maker projects made in a very professional manner. And also don't forget PCBWay also have their project section of the website. So if you're particularly proud of your own project and think others might benefit from manufacturing it, you can upload it here and other people can browse, look for your project, and then they're able to either just build the PCB or order PCB plus assembly for a low cost. And also you as the creator also get some commission for each of the projects that you share. So don't forget to visit PCBWay if you're thinking about getting some parts made. Looking at the handpiece, first of all, this is fairly generic in its design. Its differentiating factor, as you can see, is we've got four preset buttons on the handle itself. So you can uh, recall from channel one, two, three, or four, which are settable on the front panel of the unit, and you can store both temperature and airflow rates on those presets. There's also another button on the back here. So this one shuts off the heater, and then it recalls an airflow rate that you've previously defined on the user interface as well. So let's say you need to cool something after reflowing it, you can press this button, it shuts off the heater and changes the airflow rate to the one that you'd set on there previously. Other than that, it's fairly generic in its design. It's got the open-ended heater uh, design here. And as you can see in the background, we've got a range of nozzles that came with it. So quite a comprehensive set. We've got some 45 degree nozzles, which is extremely useful for when you're working under a microscope because then you can have the handpiece sticking out the side and you're not trying to work overhead uh, where the microscope is in the way. Then you've got the normal kind of straight nozzles where it just uh, directs the airflow straight down. And then it also came with a couple of nozzles that have this swirling mechanism, uh, which uh, provides sort of a different airflow. I'm not sure how useful that is once it's gone through a tube like this, I would have thought that would be something that you have on a more open nozzle, but I think it had two of those uh, that do that swirling of the airflow, possibly to mix it a little bit better so there's no hot and cold spots in the um, stream that comes out. Then we've got this cradle, which is unlike any design that I've seen before, but this thing is really, really heavy duty. It's pretty heavy as well, and it's got this steel plate at the bottom, but that isn't all of its weight. I'm not sure what it's made of, but it's really, really durable. It's non-magnetic anyway. I'm not convinced it's plastic. It could be some powder-coated aluminium or something. I can't quite tell from the feel of it, but certainly this is the most heavy-duty stand that I've ever seen. It comes with a cr cradle here, which holds the handpiece. Unfortunately, this has been chromed. It is solid metal, but I think the chrome effect kind of makes it look a little bit cheap. Uh, but that is solid metal, and you can adjust the angle of it, it's got certain locking positions, so certain preset angles, so it won't just slide down if you don't tighten this up. And the handpiece is very easily accepted into this part. Now it does actually come with two of these, and you can remove this row of nozzle holders here and add the second cradle to the top here. So if you've got two hot air stations, you can actually have just one stand and have the two hand pieces stacked on top of each other. Then these areas here are to help you remove a nozzle and put a new nozzle on if you need to do that while it's all hot. So let me see if I can illustrate this. 
Uh, let's say we want to change this nozzle while it's all still hot. You slide the nozzle between these fingers and then just pull the handpiece away and then you're able to swap it for another one all while it's still hot, which is really quite a nice feature because most of the hot air stations don't have any way to actively change a nozzle should you need to. Uh, you have to wait for it to cool down and do it by hand or maybe do it with pliers or something like that. Then we've got the main unit itself, which is a lot larger than something like the Quick. I think it's a similar width, but uh, the Quick station would be about here. This has got this extra height. But the main thing about it that you'll notice if you if you get one of these is it's so heavy. There must be some massive transformer inside it because, uh, yeah, it just feels unfeasibly heavy for what it is. This is definitely the most heavyweight hot air station that I've ever looked at. Now, if you're wondering what this thing is on the side, I think this is supposed to be somewhere where you can store the nozzles. It's some kind of silicone or rubberized. Uh, it's a flexible plastic, as you can see, but you can store your nozzles in here. And then it's got a hex screwdriver. Now, I don't actually know what that's for because I haven't seen any hex screws anywhere on this unit, but it's got space for that to sit there. On the bottom, it's got all the screws for whatever's inside of it. On the back, we've just got an IEC connector and you can see, uh, interestingly, it says power 1000 watts, but max power 1300. So we'll try and measure to see how much power it uses. Um, there is also a cradle on the side, which I think uh, you'd probably removed if you're planning to use the cradle that you saw before. Uh, but this is another option that allows you to place the handpiece in there and make it a little bit more compact. Um, but I think what's quite interesting about this one is the user interface. So we'll quickly power it up because I think it's more interesting to see this powered up. Uh, and then you can see, uh, you know, kind of how we use it at the same time as well. So the handpiece is out the cradle. And as you can see, we've got this really nice LED display. But what I really like about this device is it has everything that I've always requested should be on the user interface. We've got the set point temperature here, so we can change that. And then in the middle is the actual temperature of the heating element. So you can see that change there. And then we've got the airflow rate, which is in liters per minute. So we can increase that and it changes the airflow rate. Then we've got the presets underneath. So we've got four presets and we've got the set point temperature and the airflow rate for each of these. And when you pick one, it underlines which one's active and it immediately goes to that set point. So this is really nice because you've got all of the information to hand. You don't have to remember what the presets are. It tells you right above the button uh, and then you just press it and it goes to it. Then we've got uh, a series of buttons here. So we've got up and down on temperature and another up and down on temperature. So this is one degree steps or you can hold it uh, to accelerate through there. Or we've got five degree steps, uh, sorry, 10 degree steps here and you can hold that and quickly go through the various temperatures. So that's really nice. And the same on the airflow rate, we've got the airflow in steps of one or in steps of five liters per minute. So that is a really quick and easy way of implementing a highly functional user interface. Uh, you'll also see we've got this LED bar graph in the center here. That says how much the heat is being used. So if we turn the temperature right down, uh, then we should start to see this not doing anything. So it's flashing here saying that the heater isn't being used. And then if we increase the temperature, we'll see this go to full power and then slowly go back to uh, somewhere more towards the middle. And then you'll see it just blipping to keep the heating element warm. So that's also quite nice. It gives you an indication of how much the heating element is being used. If that's of interest to you, I think it's quite a nice feature to have. And don't forget we've got the preset on the handle as well. So if we want to recall one of these uh, presets, you press channel one, for example, and it still underlines this as if you press the button on the front panel. Preset two, three, and four. And then we also have the cool air button. So if we press this one, it goes to a previously defined airflow rate, but you can see the heater is turned off. If you want to choose what that airflow rate is, you hold down this button here. And then this allows you to choose what you want as that predefined airflow. And then when I press this button now, it goes to 130 instead. And like all the other systems with the temperature, if we wanted to change the settings and then store that in a preset, you then just hold down one of the preset buttons and it gets stored. So very simple to use. 
We've also got a button here that can turn off the beeper. So if we hold down this button here that says sound, um, you can see there's a red light there with a speaker with a cross through it, so there's no more beeps. Uh, and then there's also the possibility to change between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So again, three buttons, uh, three seconds there to switch between the two. And then there's a calibration button. So pretty much everything that you'd want on there. The one thing that we've not spoke about yet is the, uh, unfortunately it's spelt mode wrong, they put model. Um, you'll see it says general here. So this is kind of the standard PID loop. If we press this, it goes to the rapid uh, mode, which means that it uh, accelerates the heating to a set point, but almost certainly overshoots by a long way and then comes back down. And then we've got the gentle, which is a lot slower and basically prevents any overshoot, but it does mean it takes a little bit longer to get there. So I think overall, that seems like a really, really functional unit uh, with all of the kind of functionality that you'd want from a hot air station. And in case you're wondering, we've got normal seven segment displays up here. These look like dot matrix displays, but if you look closely, these are actually just seven segment displays with a mask that makes it look like a dot matrix display, but it certainly looks like really quite a nice user interface on the top here. So I'm just checking the calibration of the unit at the moment. It's currently set to 320 degrees C and we're reading about 320 on the thermocouple as well. So it seems pretty close to its calibration. We'll change it up to 350. Yeah, we see it uh, just hovering around 350 as well. Now I'm interested to see what happens if we put it into rapid mode whether we see some large overshoot, because that's what it suggests might happen. So we'll put it to 410, and let's see if it goes way over. So we saw it overshoot slightly, uh, then come back down, and it looks like it's slowly getting back up to 410. So certainly no massive overshoot, uh, as if you know it would fry something. It didn't really go above its set point. It just oscillates a little bit. Uh, to get there. Now if we put it in gentle mode and we'll do the same thing again. Let's take it up to 410 and see if it's much slower to get there. Yeah, so a lot more controlled. Now it's slowly creeping up to 410. It didn't hit 410 and then go back down and start oscillating. It's just slowly creeping up now. So uh, that button obviously just changes the PID parameters just slightly. And then as you can see, we're pretty much matching the temperature exactly. So that's really good. Wow, what the heck? I've never seen anything like it inside one of these hot air stations. It's almost like they wanted us to open it up. They've got their branding inside and everything. It's no wonder it's heavy. It's got so much sheet metal. The transformer itself is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Because, like I said, this thing is so heavy. Um, I expected something really big in there. Uh, it is still quite a chunky transformer. It measures uh, probably about 50 millimetres from the front to the back just for the core section. Uh, but there's no switch mode power supply in here, so they've gone for an EI core transformer onto the power supply PCB, and it's also got the motor controllers on there as well. And then the blower is at the back there, and that's mounted on to uh, this chassis thing. Now, I'm not 100% sure why they've designed it like this, because on most of the other stations we see the blower mounted with anti-vibration mounts as they have done here, but they normally mount that to the bottom of the unit. And this hasn't got rid of having screws at the bottom of the unit, as you can see. Um, so I'm not 100% sure on the design decision there, but certainly it makes it look really nice when you open it inside. So here is the power supply board, and we've got power coming in from the transformer down there, 24 volt AC winding and an 8 volt AC winding. So the 8 volt AC winding goes through this bridge rectifier, uh, we've got some capacitors and then two 78M05 regulators for the logic on the PCB. And then the 24 volt winding seems to go to this large bridge rectifier here. And then we've got a DC to DC converter, which I think this is for the motor driver. And then on this side, we've got the triac for the heating element. So you can see the optocoupler, we've got a triac mounted to this heat sink. So this is all the power related electronics on this board. Uh, and then all of the control is on the front panel PCB. So the front panel PCB is quite straightforward actually, there's not a huge amount on here. Uh, like many of the other hot air stations, it's using one of these low-cost STC microcontrollers. So 
Um, the reason they're able to do that is because there's not a huge amount of processing going on here. We've got a fairly simple display, and in fact those LED displays are driven by these two display controllers up here. So you just send a serial data to each of those chips, and the chip handles the multiplexing of those LED displays and everything like that. So very simple for it to drive without much processing power. So all this is really doing is reading the status of all the buttons. It's sending data out to these display drivers, reading the temperature from the thermocouple. So we've got the um, amplifier here that reads the temperature from the thermocouple into an ADC input on here. And then all it has to do is drive the triac and then also drive one PWM output to the motor, motor because uh, this blower is a bit like one of the PC fans. You provide it with power, uh, so that DC to DC that you saw uh, on this power supply board here, that's providing 24 volts. Then all you need to provide is a PWM signal to control the speed, and then it's got a RPM signal that comes back out so that the main board can check that the fan is actually spinning, and if it's not, then it shuts off the heater. So really quite straightforward, but I think this is really quite a nicely executed uh, unit, actually. Uh, for once, they've pretty much got almost everything right. Obviously, it would have been nice if they used branded capacitors and that kind of stuff. But in terms of how it's all built and put together, I really haven't got any complaints. It seems to be pretty good. So overall, I think this is actually a really nice hot air station. Certainly the best one that we've seen from a Chinese manufacturer and I forgot to mention before there is an earth lug onto the chassis and there is an AC filter in there so everything is fine from a kind of wiring and safety point of view so really I've got no complaints about this unit it seems to be well thought out really nicely designed a lot of care taken over the unit the only thing that I can complain about really is that they've gone for this tacky chrome for these buttons on the front I mean um, that was so reminiscent of the 80s and 90s where chrome was kind of the thing that made it look fancy it's not that time anymore and if they did it the buttons with the same color as the rest of the chassis i think it would look a whole lot nicer on the workbench but in terms of its performance and safety and design i think everything else is absolutely spot on so i highly recommend this unit i'll put a link to this item in the description down below if you've got any thoughts and comments don't forget to leave those in the comments section down below as well Big thanks to my Patreon supporters and also to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.